Hello, Internet. My name is Thais Alvarez. I'm a theoretical physicist and mathematician, and my mission is to create the world's first full body exoskeleton system. Now, this is ambitious, and if it's all possible, I cannot do this alone. So, therefore, welcome to Nova Machina. So today I want to walk you through an experiment, but let's first do a quick recap. In our mission to create a full body exoskeleton system, we have decided to start from the ground up. The conventional technology has not led to full body exoskeleton technology, despite, well, people's best efforts. So we're going to ditch the best technology that we have and develop our own formulas. This has led us to develop the Gaia sensor system and the Elita artificial muscle system. The problem is that they do not communicate yet. The output of the sensor does not speak the same language as the input that is needed for the Elita artificial muscles. That is what I'm experimenting with at the moment. I've called this project uh, Dahlia. And project Dahlia is simply aimed to be this bridge. Later it is also through Dahlia that we will connect to multiple muscles and do more complicated things, but for now it is this bridge between our sensors and our artificial muscles. Now the test that I've set up is with the most obvious solution that I come up, could come up with. Doesn't mean it's the best solution, but it was the quickest to try out. I'm feeding the system very, very simple signals, so nothing quite like what comes out of the Gaia sensor system, but it's a start. We've also attached to our first Dahlia module a uh, new artificial muscle, uh, which came with its own problems, but let's look at the footage. So test one started with a good contraction, but the muscle broke. I had not quite anticipated that our new muscles, or the new muscle that I created, is more symmetrical. It is better made, and therefore there's now a very nice curl in the muscle. I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but this curl unscrews the assembly it was attached to, so it all fell apart. Uh, test two failed too, but by test three we had our first successful contraction on full power. Test four failed, but test five was again on full power, successful contraction. And this is also where I started to wonder what this curl came from. Maybe it was an experimental feature. Maybe, it, or I say, maybe it was something that emerged from our experiments. Uh, so we put the weights a lot closer to the muscle and. The uh, curl in test 6 came back, so we know it's it's a muscle-specific feature. In test 7, we tested our connector with a, a very, very weak input signal, which should also trigger a very, very weak contraction of the muscle itself. By test 7, I couldn't make this work, but by test 9, this was approximately working, though it was not pretty. And by test 10, we started having problems, and by test 11, I wanted to try curling without a weight, with a very low signal input so that the curl would form very slowly. By that time, everything had broken. The entire connector had worn out, so that was the end of testing. So I think in conclusion, we know that our first prototype connector was very poorly made, but qualitatively, it worked. Contractions were triggered by, um, by the connector given simple inputs. But at a kind of closer look, I found that the force and the speed with which the, uh, the muscle contracts is about at least two thirds less than when we weren't signaling through our connector piece. There is one good outcome though. Usually what I've experienced with this project, uh, this ex exoskeleton journey uh, in general, is that once you find that something's physically possible, you can always find a different way to that destination. You've shown it's possible, there's usually more pathways. We've now shown that this is possible, that a connector piece is something we can engineer, we just have to do it better. So yeah, back to work. Anyways, thanks very much for watching. See you guys next time.